Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to the garden. We are looking at our chrysanthemums. Aren't these things just so, so pretty? Um, these florist mums are very, very different than the regular kind of garden mum chrysanthemums that you see at the home improvement centers and everything in the fall for, you know, to use in decor and all that. Uh, these are florist mums, lots of different types that we grew this year. I'll be the first one to admit I didn't do the best job taking care of them. I'll get a little bit more into that here in a few. Uh, but as these began to bud up and, you know, before the bloom, I just had so much anticipation because, you know, by this point in the year, almost everything in the garden is finished blooming. We've even had a frost, you know, I had to make sure to cover these with frost blankets just to protect them. But overall, I cannot believe what a gorgeous addition to the flower beds that these chrysanthemums have been to me. All of the chrysanthemums in this video I bought from King's Mum. I purchased from King's Mums, the website. Um, you can find it. It was just a quick Google. I uh, bought them as cuttings. So let's get into it. The first one I had is this just little purple mum. This is an unnamed mum. Uh, this is one that I propagated from last year. You remember in the cuttings video, this was just a little garden mum that I propagated on the whim and uh, it actually worked pretty good in cut flowers. Moving on to other types of uh, mums we had. This is called Icy Isle and uh, you can see it's just a single flower. It's kind of boring but it's kind of like a classic almost daisy like bloom so that's the reason I mainly picked this one is because it pretty much looks exactly like a Shasta daisy I think. And of course, it's beautiful in cut flower arrangements and, um, you know, the sprays are quite large. They were very easy to grow from sprays. Unfortunately, with this type of mum, I noticed that I had a lot of trouble keeping the petals looking clean. For example, any time that they would be exposed to rain, um, you know, the petals would just get kind of like stained and dingy and they didn't last very long in the garden. I had to really stay on top of picking them, which explains why I didn't, I don't even really have very much video of this type. I'm not quite sure if I would grow this one again specifically. I think I might experiment a little bit more with single type of um, the single mums, but I don't think this one was a winner for me. You guys have to let me know what you think about each one of these down in the comments below. And of course, I'd love to know which ones were your favorite. Next, we have one called Gillette. Now, Gillette is a mum that when you disbud it properly, um, it can grow very, very large and be very, very beautiful. Um, I did not do very much disbudding in my chrysanthemum patch. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. I did a terrible job. Um, so, most every single flower in this video was grown to a spray, which just means that I pinched it once or twice to promote more branches and then I didn't disbud or do anything after that. Um, in the coming season I really want to focus on doing a better job of pruning these and disbudding these and actually making an effort to grow beautiful large flowers and um, I, I'm gonna read up on it. That's just gonna be something that I need to personally learn about before I can kind of uh, share with you guys how to do it. There has been a huge learning curve for me, especially this year, but I'm overall pleased with the results. I think I think we did pretty well. The next flower I wanted to show you guys, this is a, another chrysanthemum that I grew in sprays, obviously. This is Kelvin Tattoo. Uh, this one was really, really interesting looking. I was initially drawn to it because of this bright orange color. Uh, you can see just the outer petals are just this bright kind of yellow orange color and the inner bits there are more of a darker orange kind of burnt orange which I think gives it a really really nice just pop of just vibrancy and just a little bit of extra interest that you might not expect. Overall this one grew really really great with very minimal care for me and the sprays were huge. I only had one plant of this and as you can see I had a bucket with quite a bit of blooms just from a few stems of the plant. Uh, so I definitely want to grow this one again in the future. Next, this one is called Kermit Green. Unfortunately, I don't have very much video of this one. I ended up picking a big bunch of these um, for a bouquet and I just didn't have, I just didn't have the camera with me that day. You can kind of tell how things are kind of laid over because I did such a poor job with trellising. Some of these also had a bit of frost damage. You see here this orange peachy, very cool looking flower. This one is called River City. Um, 
definitely one of my favorites from this season. Um, very, very pretty, very unique flower form, even when it's not fully open. Uh, just so vibrant. And you can see these flowers. This is just one stem. That's one flower stem. Ideally, I would have just budded those side shoots and left the middle one to get nice and large. But even, um, you know, on this one single branch with all these flowers, I'm not disappointed with the way that looks. Those flowers are plenty large, and I think they look really pretty in a vase, just, you know, one stem in a vase by itself, just a mass of these kind of orange champagne colored blooms. Ugh, hands down, one of my favorites that I grew this year. It is just so, so pretty. This was one of the ones that had a little bit of frost damage, though. I don't, you might be able to see it. Some of these, um, you know, my frost blanket blew off in the middle of the night when we had a hard frost. So you may notice some frost damage in a couple of these. Next, we have a flower. This one is called Shock. Um, this is another one that has smaller blooms, but very, very pretty. Um, I was expecting more of a purple color, but as you can see, it's a very bright kind of pink magenta, which I really love. And you have those nice outside petals and a center that is kind of a cushion or kind of an anemone type look in the center that I think gives it a really, really nice uh, bit of texture that goes along with some of our other chrysanthemums that we are growing here in the yard. Uh, overall, another one that was an excellent cut flower. In general, anytime we're talking about chrysanthemums, uh, we can just go ahead and assume that the vase life is going to be great. I mean, that is one of the main reasons that so many of them are, you know, seen in florist arrangements and things like that, because they are tough. Um, their vase life is really, really long. Even the ones that had been in bloom in the garden, um, you know, still looking awesome in the vase. Next, we have a very pretty pink one. This one is called Bill Holden. Uh, this is originally one that I ordered on the website. Based on the website, it was like a dark pink color. And of course, when it blooms here in my yard, it looks completely different. I don't know if this happens to other people, but I will order stuff and I'll expect one thing and then it'll start blooming and I'll be like, that looks nothing like what I expected. Even though this is uh, not, not like the Bill Holden I had anticipated, uh, I still think that it is very, very beautiful. You can see it is just the loveliest, softest kind of pastel pink color. Here it is in comparison with that shock pink color. Um, not really the color that you often associate with fall, but uh, very pretty nonetheless. Uh, moving on, I want to talk about yet another one of our uh, newer chrysanthemums that we're trying this year. And this is another blend of kind of purple and pink uh, going along that same kind of uh, purple and pink theme. This one is very unique because it is technically called a spoon chrysanthemum. Now, I would be the first one to admit that this was absolutely not something that I was initially drawn to. When I was making my order last January, I was just like, I'm going to order one of these and see what they look like because, um, you know, if all else fails, I can just show the people on the internet what, what it looks like and maybe they'll think it's cool. Um, which is why I kind of like making these videos now is because it kind of puts me outside of my comfort zone and I order things that maybe I might not like. But I tell you what, in person, these things are so stinking cool. Um, as you can see, there's that, they're kind of like, the petals are kind of rolled up and then they open at the tip and it kind of looks like a spoon. I know, right? This variety, I believe, is called Fantasy. Um, it's very much a mixture of kind of purple and pink, almost kind of like a true purple with a bright yellow open center. Uh, these were a little bit harder to pick to use for cut flowers because the flower itself is a little bit delicate, but it can definitely be done um, if this is a flower shape that you think you might really, really like. Next up, we have Joyce Fountain. Now this Joyce Fountain chrysanthemum is yet again Another one that I did not expect, and it looks nothing like the catalog. In the catalog, it was very much kind of a dark red, dark pink. And as you can see, mine are very much a light pink with a kind of yellowish center and streaking. And I don't know if it was because I had it in too much shade. I don't know if it was maybe too hot. I don't, I don't know if it had something to do with my soil, my weather. So I'm not disappointed though, even though it looks nothing like the picture, I think these are kind of cool. I think these look kind of old and antique-y and I'm always down for flowers that look like they're kind of like vintage, you know? 
kind of like that vintage wallpaper type feel where the colors are faded a little bit and you look like, you know, it kind of looks like it's been there for a while. Um, you know, I let these open a long time. Maybe they faded in the sun. Maybe they started out pink. I don't think they did because, you know, I, I would have noticed I've been in the patch picking them. I don't know. Another one of these that I really, really loved was the Seton's J'adore, or I don't know how to say it. I don't speak French, obviously. I can barely speak English, if we're being honest. Anyway, this one is just, um, it's one of the more popular types for chrysanthemums for florist mums, and you can see why. It's just these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shades of this pastel soft pink with a little bit of kind of a yellow peachy tone in the center as they open up and as they age. So, so pretty. Um, I grew these, of course, as sprays like all of the other ones. And you can see that I had two plants in the entire garden and they just produced a profusion of bloom. Next, we have another one of my favorites. This is Coral Charm. This is another one that was grown out to sprays. And I went ahead and I ordered this one on the website. They don't have the greatest picture of it. And I was just like, oh, well, it's coral. I mean, what's the worst that we can expect from coral? Coral flowers are always absolutely gorgeous. And I was not disappointed. Um, as you can see from the video, this coral charm goes absolutely perfectly with that shock one that I showed you earlier. So cute. I just love the soft kind of peachy pastel colors of this. Uh, another one was this apricot courtier or however you say it it was a little bit of a disappointment not gonna lie not my favorite one unfortunately i was hoping for a little bit better but um you know it is what it is apricot alexis however most certainly did not disappoint me look at these blooms Again, these are the blooms without any kind of disbudding or anything like that. This is from two plants of Abricot Alexis produced this many flowers. Um, just really a lot of bang for our buck that is absolutely stunning. I know some people might think the flower shape is kind of like, you know, out of control, but I personally love how crazy the flower shape looks. Um, and not to mention the color. This color is so beautiful. It is just the perfect blend of like a peach salmon soft orange color. Really love it. We also had um, Sunspot is the next one. This one was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, this one was supposed to have bright red petals and an anemone center around each of the flowers and as you can see mine are very much just uh, yellow little daisy like flowers. Don't get me wrong. They're cute. I like them but uh, you can see it's hard to compare it's hard when you kind of compare them to the likes of Alexis which we just saw like you know it's just like oh it's cute it's nice um, I'll probably grow them again give them another try see just see if I can you know get a better result maybe get some orange in the blooms like they're supposed to have but yeah it is what it is just one of those things that's why I like trying so many different flowers uh, so often and sharing with you guys too so you can kind of learn from my results, I guess. The next one we have is called Paint Box. This, I believe, is another reflex type of bloom. Uh, if you disbud them, they grow much, much larger, but as I've mentioned, I grow them in sprays. These paint boxes are really, they kind of start out a darker orange and they fade a little bit over time into this lighter orange and kind of give this kind of interesting kind of two-tone dimension that I think is really, really pretty. Not to mention this color goes really, really well with fall and, uh, you know, fall sunflowers and things like that. I think if I had some of sunflowers still in the garden, I think that would be absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, I don't. Or uh, I would have showed you guys that, that combination. Maybe with some Rudbeckia in a cut flower arrangement just would look really, really pretty. But overall, I definitely want to keep this one and grow this one again, that's for sure. Next, we have another one called Miss Goldie. Uh, this is another just kind of what I would consider a regular chrysanthemum. I think, I believe this is considered a decorative one. Uh, you can see the flowers are just a bright, beautiful orange color with a little hint of kind of a darker red in the center. Just barely, um, barely noticeable depending upon the lighting really. Um, this one didn't really trellis well, so unfortunately I don't have very many blooms of that one to show you guys, unfortunately. The next one we have is called Coca Boonmi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. I'm probably not. Um, as you can see, these flower shapes are very, very unique. 
they have those outer petals that are kind of like skirt petals, I guess, as what, how I would describe them. Um, these are very popular for show and exhibition. Obviously, I didn't grow them in that way because I don't know how. Uh, but they're gorgeous. This One side of the petal is a darker purple. The other side is a light kind of lavender color. And I cannot even begin to explain how pretty these are um, in person. They are a little bit delicate, so you do have to be careful with them unfortunately so i'm not quite sure they would make the greatest cut flower i think it is possible if you could be careful with them uh, but it's just one of those things next we have uh, i believe this is george couchman this was a very late bloomer and it ended up being wiped out completely by the frost in uh, the middle of november but you can see these few flowers they kind of have a darker top side and a golden reverse on the petal which gives them just like this dynamic kind of look like two-tone effect that is very very pretty again another one that probably should be disbudded and didn't really take to the way I was growing them in the best way which is unfortunate um, but you learn and hopefully we'll do better next time when we grow these Next, we have another one of my absolute favorites from this year, and this is called Alexis. Now, on the catalog, it says that this flower is pink, and um, it's definitely in my garden. It was more like a lavender. Um, it could be kind of pink, depending upon the lighting, I think, as you can see in this video. And just like the apricot Alexis, it has that same kind of fluffy, kind of messy flower shape, but these blooms are so incredibly full and vibrant and they are so pretty this one might be my favorite out of the whole yard i'm not sure but it might be my favorite um and i tried to take video in both the sunlight and in the shade so you could kind of see the color variation of what i was talking about very much more of a lavender color in the shade when it was growing um and kind of pink in the sunlight so it kind of does change a little bit but oh so pretty i cannot tell you how much i have absolutely fallen in love with the chrysanthemums this year. I think I'm hooked. I think this next growing season I am going to be ordering a lot more chrysanthemums to try out and to show you guys and to use for cut flowers and donate and everything like that because they have just been such a pleasure. Um, I did have a few other chrysanthemum varieties in the garden this year but unfortunately some of them kind of got smashed and bent over and kind of lost in the madness um, because I didn't trellis them well. I've also learned a lot this season in terms of trellising. So that's something that I look forward to trying again is to successfully trellis them and make sure uh, that everything is the way it should be. That's really about it for this video. I am so, so appreciative that you have watched it. Thank you so much. Uh, down in the comments below, I would love to know uh, which chrysanthemum that I grew this year was your favorite because I think that's really awesome uh, to find out because everybody has different tastes. Um, as always, be sure to hit subscribe if you're new here and hit the little bell icon, get notifications. We grow a lot of cut flowers and everything and we would absolutely love to have you. Be sure to check out our Instagram page and our main blog and everything like that. Join us on Patreon if you would like to support us. I am so thankful if you do. I hope that you are having such an incredible day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye guys.